Guys, Mr. Bowman here. We're looking at 2.6 algebraic concepts, and in this video, we're going to focus on all the merit questions from that 2015 paper. So let's get into question number one. And question number one, the market value of Sue's house is increasing at a constant exponential rate, and that makes sense because we've got an exponential equation um, below. Um, that rate is 3% per year. Since she bought the house 16 years ago at the start of 1999. At the start of 2015, it was worth $350,000. Assuming the exponential value of the exponential growth is in the form of y equals a times r to the power of t, what was the value of the house at the beginning of 1999? So let's start off with by writing down our equation, y is equal to a times r to the power of t. So they don't give us too much information about the equation, so it's our job to know what it relates to. So the t is a nice one, so that's the number of years past. Um, so years, which in our case we were told in the question 16 years ago. The rate, or the r value, so r, r our value is going to be equal to 1.03, and that 03 part of that relates to the 3% the given to us in the question. If that was 10%, for example, it would be 1.1. If it was 2%, 1.02, um, and so on. The only other thing to know is the, what is the A value and what is the Y value? So the A value, that relates to the original value, and that is when time is equal to zero, so no time has passed based on the model. And the y is the current value. And that's based on whatever t that you're using um, from before. So we've got that broken down. We're now going to substitute what we know. So the current value, we have been told that is $350,000. So $350,000 is going to be equal to a. And that's our unknown. So we want to know the value when the house was purchased, so we don't know that, times r 1.03 to the power of 16. Um, this here looks a bit messy, but when you actually break it down, this here is really just multiplication. So we're going to get rid of that, move that to the other side, leaving a by itself by dividing. So we're going to go divide by 1.03 to the power of 16, which means those will cancel each other out. And we're going to go divide by 1.03 to the power of 16. So A will be equal to 350,000. 1.03 to the power of 16. Now, when you put that in your bracket, in your calculator, sorry, when you put that in your calculator, make sure you have your brackets. Um, and then you will be able to get to the answer. Don't forget my units, dollar sign, $218,000, 108. 0.43, and that had a 2DP rounding. Being money normally comes to cents, we don't go any more than one cent. Okay, we're now looking at question number two. Question two is pretty messy for an achieved question, but one where we do have the skills to go through them all. Um, so the first thing to note is you've got a quadratic on the top and bottom of this fraction. Um, the strategy you normally go for for these types of questions is you want to factorize the top, factorize the bottom, and see what cancels out. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the numerator first. So that's our numerator. We now want to think about factorizing. And when there is a number out front of the x squared, you're probably going to think about the grouping method. And to do that, you've got to multiply the first number by the last number. And in our case, that's going to get us to negative 8. You've then got to think, well, what numbers multiply to negative 8 but add to positive 7? And in our case, I'm thinking it's going to be 8 plus minus 1. That should get us to negative 7. We're now going to split this 7x into 8x and minus x. So that's going to become 2x minus, oh, sorry, plus 8x minus 1x minus 4. We now... Oh, 2x squared. We now factorize the first part and the second part. So this here is going to be 2x, x plus 4. The second part, they've both got a minus 1 in common. So we're going to take out that minus 1, x plus 4. We've got the same bracket coming up twice, which means we didn't do any silly math errors on our way. 
So the factorized version of that would be x plus, or, sorry, x minus 1. So 2x and the minus 1. And then the x plus 4 after that as well. So that's the first part. We now need to do the same for the bottom. The bottom looks a bit easier, I think. So we've got 2x squared minus 32. I can see they've got a 2 in common. So it's going to be 2x squared minus 16. And x squared minus 16 is a difference between two squares. So that's going to be 2x plus 4x minus 4. So now that I've got those, I can form or make a fraction that, cha that changes from that. So we've got 2x minus 1, x plus 4, divided by 2x plus 4, x minus 4. The x plus 4s cancel each other out, leaving us with 2x minus 1, divided by 2x minus 4. Um, and it's one thing to note, um, the denominator of a... Um, kind of fraction here can't be equal to zero or else you get a math error. So in this case, if that x is a 4, that would be 4 minus 4, which is 0, 2 times 0, which is 0, divided by 0, math error. So for this particular expression, x cannot be equal to 4. We're now looking at question number 3, and we've got an expression, we have to simplify it um, to make sure all the powers are positive. So let's drop down our question. So we've got a to the power of 10 divided by 4a to the power of 5. All of that is to the power of negative 2. So the first step I normally do for these questions is I will expand the brackets. And in that I mean by a to the power of 10 to the power of negative 2 divided by 4a to the power of 5 to the power of negative 2. So I've expanded the bracket to get to the numerator and the denominator. Now that I've done that, I've got some negative powers. I'm going to do a bit of a switch. I'm going to switch around the numerator and the denominator. And when I do that, the power becomes positive. So you can see this is now in the numerator with a positive power. And down the bottom, a to the power of 10 squared. When you've got these, we can now just simply expand the bracket. So that's going to be 4 squared times a to the power of 10 divided by a to the power of 20, that's going to become 16 divided by a to the power of 10, because we've got these 10, we'll cancel out 10 of these, leaving us with 10 extra down the bottom. Okay, we are now looking at question number four, and again, another indice question. They love putting merit questions with an indice type vibe. So let's start off with by jotting down the question. So the fifth root of 32 divided by x to the power 5, and that there is going to be cubed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the third into a fraction power. So that there is going to be 32 divided by x to the power 5, and that there is going to be to the power of 3 divided by 5 as a fraction. So just a reminder, the 5 in the square root symbol goes to the denominator, and the 3 sitting inside heads up for the numerator. Like the previous question, I'm then going to split the bracket into its two parts. So it's going to be 32 to the power of 3 over 5 divided by x to the power of 5, power 3 over 5 again. So when we expand these brackets, um, what we're going to do is we're going to split this top one into a bit more. It's going to get a bit annoying, but it's going to be 32 to the power of 1 fifth times 3. And then that's going to be divided by x to the power 5 times 3 over 5. So hopefully we're still there, getting a bit messy. I'm now going to clear this up. So 1 fifth is the square root of 5. So the square root, or the fifth root of 32. And all of that is going to be to the power of 3. That's going to be divided by x to the power of 3. And that's because the times 5 and the divide by 5 cancel each other out. Now, this is where it simplifies a bit. The fifth root of 32 is 2. So that means 2 cubed divided by x cubed. 2 cubed is 8 
divided by x cubed. So pretty tricky question. We're switching in and out, dealing with a lot of fractions, splitting them up. Um, if you didn't like that, at this stage here, if you did 0 0.6 to the root of 32 on your calculator, you would have gone straight to the 8. Um, that would have saved a bit of time, but we went through the long way. Now up to question number five. This is the last merit question from the 2015 exam. This will be a bit of a long one, um, but we've got an equation here. We've been asked to solve it. So we've got one divided by t times t minus one, subtracting one minus t. That's going to be equal to three minus, oh, sorry, three divided by t minus one. So the first thing to note is having all the variables, all the t, on the bottom is quite annoying. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of all of that. And the only way we can get rid of this big messy one is if we times everything by that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go times t, t minus 1, minus, oh, sorry. So that's timesing the first part. We then need to times the middle part by the same. And finally, we need to times the final bit by the same. And when we simplify that, that's going to be t, t minus 1 divided by t, t minus 1. And then it's going to be minus t, t minus 1 divided by t. That will be equal to 3 t, t minus 1 divided by t minus 1. And when you do this process, a heap of stuff's going to cancel each other out. So that t and that t cancel, that t and that t cancel. So that would leave 1 over here. t and t cancel there. t, oh sorry, not t. T minus 1 and T minus 1 cancel there, leaving us the 3T, the T minus 1 there, and the 1 over there. So that's going to become 1 minus T minus 1 equals 3T. A lot of people will forget to keep this in brackets, but just a reminder, you're minusing the entire bracket. So when you expand it, you're going to go minus and minus, which becomes positive. So that there is going to be 1 minus T plus 1. So I think plus 1 is where a lot of people would have gone wrong. They would have put minus 1 there equals 3t. We're then going to go plus t plus t. So 2 is equal to 4t divided by 4 divided by 4. t equals 2 over 4. And when we simplify that fraction, that equals 1 half. At this stage here, because there's a lot of letters on the denominator, you probably need to check, will t be 1 half make any of those 0 and therefore a math error? In this case, no. So 1 over here, 0 over here, and 1 over here. Any of those would make them zero. We don't have that, so we're all good in our case. So that wraps up the 2015 merit questions. Hopefully you found this video useful. Keep an eye out for the other ones. Make sure you're looking at some excellence questions as well.